I had a letter yesterday from a listener complaining about my coverage of coal seam gas, and I wrote to the listener to say that it is difficult putting a program together, but I'm driven by a concern that I come comfortably to work each morning, and I go home comfortably, and I'm paid. And yet there are people all over Australia, and my program goes all over Australia, who wake up in the morning to the anguish and anxiety they went to bed with yesterday, all as a result of government failing to represent adequately the community. Nowhere is this more evident than in the decision by the Land and Environment Court in New South Wales in relation to the little tiny Bulga village community near Singleton. The presiding judge, Preston, said this. Now, this is being appealed by Rio Tinto and the New South Wales government. Preston, the judge, said this, quote, There is no priority afforded to mineral resource exploitation over other uses of land, including nature conservation. There must be an assessment of all of the different and often competing environmental, social and economic factors in order to determine what is the preferable decision as to the use of land. That's what he said. There is no priority afforded to mineral resource exploitation. What he meant was there should be no priority. But, of course, governments just fall over themselves. And this brings me to these people that I've talked about at Tara. Yes, it's coal seam gas. But if you're not a selfish person, you'd be thinking, as I said to Barry O'Farrell once, how would you and your family and children like to wake up to what people are waking up to every day at Gloucester? I don't apologise for fighting this battle. No one else is. And it's only because I believe, on the one hand, that they don't know, or on the other hand, in government, they're beholden to the mining industry. They're locked in. You've heard me talk about the anguish and anger, the anger that Mr Harcher expressed when he was in opposition to mining of coal seam gas, or George Suris, who said to the AGL, get out of the Hunter Valley. But in government, they're just lick spittles of the mining industry. I'm grateful that there are people like Geraldine. McCarran. Who's she? Well, I suppose you could just say she's a general practitioner. She's been living and working in suburban Brisbane for the past 25 years. 18 months ago, she was completely oblivious to the concept of unconventional gas extraction. She said, having been made aware of the impacts of coal seam gas and shale gas developments overseas, I took an increasing interest in what was happening in rural Queensland, and I became increasingly concerned. Yes, I'm talking about Queensland, but every syllable here applies to Gloucester, to Gunnedah, to Camden, to Appen, to the Southern Islands, to Kyogle, to Casino. And this, as I said to you some weeks ago, is an invasion. She said, Doctor, I began following the story of the coal seam gas industry in the Tara area, and I visited the region on several occasions as part of a community initiative called Bridging the Divide. And she said, This put into sharp focus the problems being experienced by people living within Queensland's gas fields, and it led her to undertake a study. She's an Irish GP who practices in Brisbane, but she's heavily qualified. Bachelor of Medicine, Bachelor of Surgery, Bachelor of the Art of Obstetrics, Fellow of the Australian College of General Practitioners, Member of the National Toxics Network, member of Doctors for the Environment Australia. So she thought she'd undertake some research in a small, rural, residential community, five hours' drive from Brisbane. You guessed it, Tara. You've heard me talk to Debbie Orr on many occasions, in tears. What Dr McCarran found in the small community shocked her. Dr McCarran is on the line. Geraldine McCarran, good morning. Hello, how are you? I love the accent. (laughs) <laughs> Thank you for your time on an issue that I've been fighting about for years. You have said, quote, There's a background level of illness which is way above anything you could expect. In addition, that you wrote, there are severe exacerbations where many people are very ill at the same time. You said these are usually associated with odour events, changes in wind direction and temperature inversions. How come you've found this out and the Department of Health haven't? Well, perhaps it was I actually went there and spoke to the people. Um, The Queensland government set up an investigation in June um, last year and um, they 
were meant to investigate what was happening, but nobody from the department, no doctor employed by the Queensland government actually went into the Tara estates at all. Um, that might be part of the reason that I actually... Absolutely. And this is happening everywhere. There has been no investigation anywhere of the things you were looking at. You say the community has been trying to get help for the last three years but without any success. And you said, almost rhetorically, what about the legislation? And as you said, you'd assume it would protect the people. And you're assured that the legislation represents best, best practice. But, of course, as you say... This is all designed to ensure that the gas developments go ahead. Well, that would appear to be the point. Um, I can't really say about the legislation. All I can say is that I really think there ought to be federal legislation to cover public health. Because at the moment, public health is um, left to the states and then um, economic issues can overcome health issues. Quite. And, of course, the first step is, as you said, declare the gas projects, as is happening in New South Wales, matters of state importance. So straight away... You've got a coordinator general in Queensland. You've got a department of planning here. You've got a minister here or several ministers. You've got a premier here. The project's approved. It proceeds without any kind of recommended restrictions. That would appear to be the case. Um, The problem is sometimes there are recommended restrictions and sometimes there are um, audits put in place to try and cover... Um, what the problems may be, but they don't always follow through. For example, in Queensland in 2011, the stated plan to track and manage the environmental performance of the coal seam gas industry included um, 10 unscheduled audits of the fracking activities. Um, None of them were actually carried out, uh, would you believe, due to occupational health and safety difficulties associated with attending unscheduled fracking operations. So in other words, um, children can live in Tara right through fracking and um, in, in, um, with, with the giant ponds and the venting and the flaring and everything, but the people who are responsible for monitoring it um, find that it's safer to stay in the office. It's absolutely staggering, is it not? And, I mean, this is everywhere. And you're just talking about public health. We could talk about water. We could talk about what happens to the productive quality of the land, all of those things, none of them. And if there are any reports, as you found out and I found out, they're written by the proponents. Well, yeah, the language seems to um, copy directly from one to the other. Um, In fact, the language seems to be international and... um, What the politicians say echoes what the proponents of the gas industry say in every country, Mm. almost word for word. Quite, absolutely. Very interesting, not apropos your study, but I just throw this in for the benefit of my listeners. There's currently a motion before the Senate in Canberra, and it's being debated, and now the debate has been adjourned without decision. But basically it's said that on matters of health and water and food security, and all related matters, the final determination should rest with the federal and the national government. Interestingly, that both the major parties don't want that to occur, so they can wash their hands of it and just say, oh, God, this is all too difficult, leave it to the states. No one wants to take responsibility for this, do they? No, but the thing is, um, I think the politicians really ought to reconsider their position on this because what I found was really quite significant. There was a relatively large cluster of people who were complaining of symptoms that in themselves were significant. Mm. And I think it is important to put it on the public record that this is so because they really need to define whether the health issues that are being reported in Tara are related to coal seam gas or are not related to coal seam gas because if they are, then this is a major public health issue Mm. because this is is an industry that's been rolled out right across Australia. That's right, rolled out right across Australia. We're just talking about one of the metaphors. You've called your report the symptomatology of a gas field 
and you said that in dealing with the community at Tara you had concerns children could be experiencing damage to their nervous systems. You said some reported sensations of numbness and pins and needles, and you said, quote, in my suburban practice that's not something I would see in people of that age group. My feeling is that people's concerns for their health have substance. Yes, I do. And you said there needs to be an intensive investigation to find out what's going on. You've given your report, delivered it to Springborg, the health minister, have you not? Well, I delivered it to his office. Yeah, and? Well, I haven't heard any response. Unbelievable. And, of course, you made the point that the government research from this Dr Keith Adam, a specialist in environmental medicine, and the Darling Downs Public Health Unit was not sufficient. What is the agenda here? Why are people preferring mining companies over public health? I can't answer that. I don't know what, if what, if any agenda is, whether um, people just aren't taking the issue seriously. I think, I think some people might think, um, oh, it's just a few people, why don't they move? You know, if it's a problem, what are they whinging about? Rather than actually saying, looking with clarity at the issue and seeing, is this an issue that actually relates to health? Like in, 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 in the Queensland government report, the only diagnosis they came up with was solastalgia. That's right, solastalgia, yeah. Which is remarkable, you know, for... Yep. <laughs> it, it, it's just remarkable that that, of all the diagnoses that they could have come up with, that that was it. Um, and I think it just shows with what seriousness they are taking it. Um, we're talking about a situation where there are innumerable chemicals in the atmosphere. Even with their um, totally inadequate investigation, there were um, those acetone and acrolein and benzene and toluene and hexane. And Many of which are cancer-inducing. Yes, many of which are cancer-inducing. And the evidence from um, um, America particularly is that there are significant health effects uh, related to living within the gas field. There are... Um, it, it, it has been shown that the, the risk of in cancer is increased if you live within a closer distance to a gas well than if you live further away. In Canada, they found there's increased cancers associated with un unconventional gas development. Mm -hmm. um, in, in, in Pennsylvania, they found a range of symptoms that were remarkably sim similar to what the people in um, around Tara were experiencing, and they found that they um, um, were rel directly linked to the chemicals that were found in the air in the same places, mm -hmm. and that the, the, the symptoms that the people had related to the symptoms that you could get from the chemicals that were there. In other words, there's plenty of international evidence. There is a lot. To, to support what you were saying, and... Yep. And, and you you spoke to all those who'd complained. You listened to the views of 38 families, 113 residents. Yes, there'll be more than that. Yep. Those are just the people that I've seen within the days that I had yes. to be there. I mean, the guts of it here is it appears that governments across Australia aren't concerned with protecting the people. They're concerned with protecting the mining industry. Well, I, it's just that I don't think they've taken it seriously. I, I you know... No, they just want the money. Well... Yes, perhaps, but but I think they they, they are believing the spin um, that that has been fed into their ears that that this is um, scaremongering, that this is trivia, that this is anti-development, that this is this, that, or the other thing. I think they need to look at it from the opposite direction to see is this an issue? Yes or no? Is it really an issue? Yes or no? And then to decide what to do about it, rather than to assume it is not an issue, that it is somebody just trying to um, 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 put a spoke in the wheel. Of, of, but, but these people at Gloucester in New South Wales, or Appen, or Camden, or the Southern Highlands, or Gunnedah, or Tar in Queensland, have no one in government speaking for them. No one. Where does this, where does this end? This is, is this the asbestos of tomorrow? Well, this is the question, you know, if, if the symptoms that are reported in Tara truly are related to um, living in the gas field, then 
really this could be the asbestos of tomorrow because the, the, the symptoms that would be reported now are the short-term um, effect of, of gas up your nose or, or into your lungs or getting into your bloodstream. But the question is that if the symptoms are truly related to living in the gas field, then you're going to be looking at years down the track what the long-term mm. effects are. Mm. And, of course, there are people waking. It's all very well for you and for me. I mean, we're comfortable. There are people waking up to this every day. I find it frightening. You said in your report, which is comprehensive, 100 pages of it, no baseline air or water monitoring or baseline health studies were done prior to the Queensland government permitting the widespread development of the coal seam gas industry in close proximity to family homes. That is exactly true of New South Wales as well. Your report says there was no ongoing health study or surveillance and no ongoing testing to monitor chronic exposure levels, and none of that is in place. That's true of New South Wales. And yet this little community you visited is the most densely settled area in Australia to have seen intensive coal seam gas development. But Gloucester here in New South Wales is identical to the circumstances of Tara. And yet these people at Tara and at Gloucester have informed the New South Wales government and the Queensland governments of the health problems. Uh, you, your reports like yours are just trivialised or ignored. Um, ignored, actually. Ignored? Yes. You said, quote, the recent report released by the Queensland government following their investigation into the health impacts near Tara was so inadequate and flawed that it has done little to alleviate concerns. That's correct. So you're saying now, what do we do? And you've provided answers to what to be done. You've said we need a fully funded, comprehensive medical assessment of residents currently living in close proximity to unconventional gas developments. And you say that must be carried out as a matter of urgency. And that must also include the workers who um, are working uh, yeah. with, within... The working in the industry. Um, and they tend to be a rather mobile population. Yes. And some of them may already have left as a result of health concerns. Yes. And some have. And then you say, which I've been saying, and you get absolutely nowhere, the government of Queensland and New South Wales don't want to know about any of this, there should be health impact assessments, objective, sorry, scientific health impact assessments, to be an integral part of every unconventional gas development. Yes. That, that's an obvious one. Obvious. But then you say also in your report, you recommend no new permit should be issued without a health impact assessment being carried out for every development already in place. We don't have any of that. Yes. We don't have any of it. You, your report recommends comprehensive air and water monitoring. Got none of that? Yes, and the thing is it must be comprehensive. And independent. And independent and available for um, surveillance by the public that they must know what, what, what is happening. And it must in, look at all the potentials in terms of, of um, toxins that are in, in the, the gas field and coming from all the different sources, Quite. from the ponds Quite. and from um, the, the um, venting pipes, yep. the valves. And, and you make a very valid point about the, mo about the monitoring too, Doctor, don't you? You say, and preferably this information, independent, unbiased, fully funded and available for public scrutiny, preferably available in electronic form so that people don't have to go and buy books and reports and volumes of paper and so on. You also say, and this is the guts of it again, gas companies must be required to fully and openly disclose in a timely manner all chemicals and all quantities of chemicals used or planned to be used for drilling, fracking, cleaning, dehydration and other processes at every gas facility. I addressed the National Press Club more than two years ago about this very issue. We've been saying this for years, but nothing has happened, has it? Well, it would appear not. It's it, like, as I say, I'm relatively new to what has been happening in Australia. And obviously you've been following it a lot longer. Mm. And you make the very valid point, which we would expect, because it's happening all over Australia. I've called it an invasion 
Because it's happening, you say the federal government must develop legislation, a unified standard, your words, to protect public health across Australia from the impacts of unconventional gas development and other extractive industries. Now, of course, public health involves water quality as well, toxicity, doesn't it? Yes, yes. It, 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 it's the whole holistic issue. Mm. Well, where do we go from here? They'll ignore you. The report of the Queensland government have got it. New South Wales government couldn't care less. They'd, in fact, turn you off. Where the hell do we finish up? Well, I think part of the, the issue is that the people must know what, it, what, what is mm. going on. Certainly in Queensland, one of the biggest problems is that people east of the dividing range don't really know, don't really understand, don't really get it about what's happening, even though... Um, the licences are being handed out for places like Harvey Bay and Mirabur and 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 oh, yeah. um, um, sort of north of Brisbane. Yeah, here, well, everywhere. I mean, it's on the back door of people here in Gloucester, and they're talking about exploring for calcium gas on our water table here. I mean, it is beyond belief. It, it just defies. I call it about the pub test. You're an Irish woman. You know what the pub test is. Go into the pub and ask them in the pub what they think. And they think, hang, you've got to be stark raving mad to be allowing this to happen without appropriate investigative work. Well, yeah, I couldn't say it better. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you. And thank you for your time. Thank you. Bye. It's Dr. Geraldine McCarran. There you are. She practices in Brisbane. She's a Bachelor of Medicine, a Bachelor of Surgery, a Bachelor of the Art of Obstetrics a fellow of the Australian College of General Practitioners, a member of the National Toxics Network, a member of Doctors for the Environment of Australia. She decided to undertake the research herself. She has submitted the 100-page paper, which I have read, to the Queensland Government, but no-one in government cares.